All right, we're back on Lee Chess, greatest of chess websites. Going to play some three minute. Would love to hit 2400, that would be a nice number. Going to play the four knights with bishop e5. Okay, they played d6. My temptation when they make a move like d6, cutting their bishop off from the game, is to immediately try to open up the center against their passive play. Now my queen on d4 is pretty good. It's a fairly stable queen. I do not think they should make this weakness on d6. I can just target it. Now it's a backwards pawn, and I don't see how they defend it. They're just going to give it up. I don't have to take it immediately, so I'm going to prevent any knight g4 ideas, and only then take. Uh, I'm up a pawn. Maybe they're going to go queen a5 or queen b6. I think I'll just take that. Play a3. I could play king b1, but I don't want my knight tied to defending it, so I'm just going to play a3. Think about maybe knight b5 to c7. Just develop. I can recapture rook. Black is down a pawn. I don't know why they're so eager to trade here. I think knight b5 looks at some weak squares in their camp. Um, again, don't understand the trades. It also blockades their pawns nicely. Maybe knight d6 asking, how do you defend b7? Okay. I'm just going to take that. I'm very confused by this game. I feel like my opponent is giving me material and trying to trade pieces. So I'm going to seek out trades. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Alright. I mean, 97 check wins everything. The rook's on d7, the knight's on c6. I think I'll play someone a little higher rated in the uh, my next game. But I think a sort of instructive point is black, if we look at the database, you're not going to see knight takes d4 here. Yeah, masters have played it once out of, you know, a bit over 150 games. Because while we hear don't bring out your queen early in the opening, the queen's actually very good here. It's very stable. The knight doesn't naturally attack it. The bishop's not going to go to g7, so the bishop doesn't really naturally attack it either, and white always has knight d5 to control the uh, f6 square if the bishop wanted to come there. This bishop isn't attacking it. To attack the queen, to drive it away from this very strong central post, black has to play c5. But c5 means this d6 pawn's backwards. It can never be defended by another pawn. It's very weak. And I just retreated the queen and won the pawn. And I think... I think there's a certain level of player that kind of automatically plays c5 because it wins time, but it's weakening to black's game, you know. Uh, black is making a move that just makes their position worse. Uh, and I think you got to try to cut those moves. Because it's so easy to see, ah, I can make a threat. There's a similar thing where players will be like, aha, I have a check, I must play the check. And often keeping the check in reserve is how tactics are won. Often, if you don't play, like, queen a4 check immediately, but wait, sometimes they take a pawn on e4, and then you play queen a4 check, and suddenly you've won a piece. And players are often in a rush to make these tempo-gaining moves, but they don't necessarily help their own position. And we should look to make moves, you know, that improve your position. All right. One for one. Okay. Apparently, I have not only bribed chess.com, I have bribed Lee Chess to give me all whites. Alright. I don't know what to do against the Latvian, so I should play this kind of slowly. I'm going to take on e5, and then I know you're supposed to come to c4. Then they can take on e4, and now they're thinking about d5. So probably knight c3 makes sense. Control d5. I would expect c6 or queen f7. That is a move too. And now, if I take on e4, they have d5. So I think I should just play d3, trade off their good center pawn, and slowly reorganize my pieces. Okay, this might have been wrong, because now my knight cannot go here due to d4. So I guess I'll play knight e5 and try to support it with d4. But I think I've clearly gone wrong. Black has quick undermining of my uh, pieces. Gonna try to get castles quickly and look to undermine their center with f3. Um, but certainly black should be very happy with the opening of this game. Now I have that supported my center a little better and have the two bishops. So I'm actually feeling a little better now. I'm gonna question their pawn. 
Um, maybe look to play c4 at some point soon. Uh, I kind of want rook e1, but I like my rooks on the e and f files. I like my rooks here and here. So I'm going to think, how can I move my bishop and queen away productively? Maybe queen d3. Keep an eye on e4. Bring out the bishop next. a3 and g5 are both tempting. I think I'll go a3 because it wins time. If they take on e5, I take back and I'm hitting f6 and f8. And then just intending to follow with rook e1. And I think I now like my position. I'm going to play c4 soon, start working on their center, breaking it down. I have a clear target. Their queen is pretty uncomfortable. Yeah, they felt the need to take. Um, probably rook e1. Just keep my strong central rook. Ooh, maybe I could have kept the rook on f1 so I could take here and get discoveries on their queen. I didn't really think of that. All right, rook takes e5. I'm threatening rook e7, and they decided to give me a pawn, if I want it. An exchange will be in an opposite bishop's position. But I should have activity, because I'm invading on the 7th after, aren't I? So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for this. They can't take on a2, because rook e8 checks very strong. So I think they have to move the bishop out to try to get their rook in the game. That's going to give me time for rook e7, and I'm going to hopefully get pressure against g7. And I think this should be pretty hard for them to defend, because they can't defend the color complex that I can attack with their bishop. So I should look at a few things. One is, I'll need king safety at some point. Okay, so rook e8 check, king h7 is not allowed. Doesn't this just win their queen? Why did they go h6? I have that square covered. They needed to move their bishop out of the way. Yeah, this was a silly blunder. Um, two for two. I'll take it. Uh, let's look at what happened in the opening, though, because I clearly screwed that up pretty badly. f5. Knight takes e5 is the most popular move. Queen f6. Ah, people are playing d4. I only knew of knight c4 as a move. I'm not familiar with d4. All right, we'll look at that in a moment. f takes. Knight c3. Queen f7. Okay. And here I play d3 to try to undermine, but I should play knight e3 to control d5. And after knight e3, I think c6 is the main move. And then I play d3. Interesting. Because if they play d5, I could take, and they don't have d4 because my queen controls. So instead, they take on d3, bishop takes d3, d5. I can castle here. Interesting. I was thinking, like, I'm ahead in development, but black has the center. Um, but if I can just castle here, is d4 not scary? Do I get a big e-file attack? White is winning. Interesting. Huh. So it's recommending knight c4. Knight c4, dc3, rook e1 check. They can't block because of knight d6. And if they block bishop e6, queen g4, and I'm going to pile up on the bishop. I don't know why there are so many arrows. Okay. And if king here, I have discoveries. Follow up a line because it looks fun. Yeah, that's a fun finish. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, I need to play knight e3. I knew knight e3 would come, but I thought I was supposed to play d3 first. But I play knight e3 and then d3. And then there's this other line where I can also play d4 here. And against d4, they drive away the knight. If you come to c4, if I come to f3, they'll win time when they take on e4. They take. They're now threatening d5, so I control it. Queen g6. That's interesting. Keeps an eye on g2, makes it a little hard for me to develop. Bishop f4 is the idea just to drop back to g3. Knight f6 threatens d5. I'm also keeping an eye on c7 if they do play d5, so they have trouble getting their center. Ah, maybe I'm going queen side. Queen d2, bishop b7, castle queen side. Yeah, well, it looks like they have quite a nice game. So White has a couple pads against the Latvian. I wasn't familiar with either, and I think I got pretty lucky to get out of the opening with a nice position, and then my opponent made some blunders. But two for two. I think often also players seek out opposite bishops against stronger players, when in fact the opposite bishop is tricky to play. And here it made some sense. They had a 
a difficult position, but giving up a pawn to go into it seemed too much cost. So I'm playing a reverse close Sicilian. Hit the c4 pawn. Uh, one standard idea is to play for a quick bishop h3 with h5, h4, and white is preventing it. So now the question is, am I annoyed by h5? I don't know. I could play h6 if I am. I feel I shouldn't need to, so I'm going to continue developing. Maybe look to play f5, f4 someday. Uh, try to break up their pawns now that their h pawn doesn't support g3. Okay. I'm going to castle. I don't feel too worried about attacks here. At some point, to evict this strong knight, I will probably play knight d8 and knight c8, which looks silly, but means after c6 they have nothing they can trade their knight for. First, I think I should bring my rook to the king side. It would be worth noting if white had a pawn on e4 and I had a pawn on h6, white would have the bishop takes h6 trick with knight f6 forking uh, king and queen after. Alright, so I'm going to start looking to dislodge their knight. I guess I'll start with knight d8, because I don't, I think on knight c8, knight b5, I might have trouble defending this pawn. So I'm going to start with knight d8. Keeps b7 defended if this knight moves, so the bishop can't win it. Look to play knight c8 next, evict, and then maybe I can start thinking to advance in the center, not to push d5. Alright, knight c8. Uh, gotta worry about bishop h6 tricks. If they play bishop h6, I'll probably play f5 to control f6. Um, I'm gonna kick the knight. And now I think push f5, think about f4. I don't think white has too much of an attack. They don't have an entry square. I would like f4. I think that looks strong to me. Okay. I guess I have to... T Ooh, but if I take back f-pawn, I allow queen h5. So, okay, we'll take back bishop. Maybe losing the two bishops isn't too bad here, and the d3 pawn is weak. Because if I take here, I'll fork f2 and d3. They can defend it with a move like queen e2. Maybe knight e6 to d4. If they take on f5, though, I would like to be able to take back queen. So maybe start with... Ah, uh, but they're going to have bishop b4 there. Huh. The knight e6, knight takes, rook takes, bishop h3 is annoying me. Huh. Okay. I'm going to try knight e6. I'm, if knight takes f5, I think I'll take back pawn, allowing queen h5, and say, if you ever come to h7, I can run with the king. Scary, though. is scary. I'd love to play something like e4. I would love to open the game. Maybe f4 allows their bishop in. I don't want that. I have to play quick. I might be in trouble, but I think I can go to f7. Moving the knight doesn't cover g5, so I potentially allow some stuff, but okay. Queen e6 seems useful centralization. I'd love to try to run. Can't yet. Thinking maybe knight e7 and queen g6. Try to counter their play. I'm very low on time, so I'm probably going to talk less and try to play faster. I don't see how they beat me here, so I'm just going to try to not lose immediately in any line. Um, can I pre-move king f7? Probably shouldn't. Try to swap queens. I now have h7 controlled. I guess take here first, make sure I get queens off. And then take the knight, because the knight had no scary discoveries. Maybe king f7 coming. Try to get to g6. Maybe knight g6, but I get worried about rook g5 and my pieces are all lined up. Okay. Um, guess I'll advance it. They can play a bishop d6 anyway. 
and then this pawn's hard to defend as well as the knight. Tricky. Um, I guess I'll take knight. They can swap rooks and win f5, and then d 5s weak. I just I invade on e2 at the end, and I didn't see anything else. If they take here, maybe I have knight b4, forking d3 and a2. My rook's coming in. I think I have some um, some play here. Maybe I ordered it wrong. Maybe I should have played rookie 2 first, but then they could take on d5, and I wanted to avoid that. Okay, interesting. Maybe think about knight c5 someday. Play b6, prepare it. Complicated. I meant to take b2. I'm gonna try to. Oof! Lucky! Oh, was way down on time there. Obviously, just hanging stuff at the end, but uh, three for three. Um, I was in a lot of trouble, and I. There must have been a win for them. I think it did a decent job getting out of it. I think knight b4 was a good move. Um, keeping the knight on the board and staying active. But I dealt with this h-pawn push. I just wasn't worried about it. And around here, I think I must have started going astray. Okay, apparently my position's already pretty tough. So... Huh. Alright, so here it doesn't like castling into it. Though it, you know, if you look, it says castle's top move, but as soon as I castle, it's like, ah, h5. Maybe worrisome. But okay, after a little more thought, not so bad. All right, bishop d2. I played rook e8 before knight d8. It's interesting it has knight d8 as a top choice, but you'll see it also really likes uh, rook a8, though it's dropping down on the list. Interesting. I tend not to play knight d8 until I've gotten my rook out, because my rook can get stuck over here. So rook a8, knight c3 e4. Is knight e5 coming after? Yeah, trying to hit it d3. Alright, that's a tricky move. Did not consider that. Uh, knight d8, e4, knight c8. Okay, so knight c8 was where I went wrong. So if I just play c6, I don't need to get the other knight out of the way first. And now if h5, maybe then can I go f5? Apparently not. So apparently f5 is pretty weakening if they get an h5, which does make sense. I just figured it would be how I'd get counterplay. Ooh, I like bishop d7. That's interesting. Get the knight to the d4 square. Spot the weakness. I like that move. Or bishop c8. That's interesting. Just retreat the bishop, give the knight a path back into the game. Okay. Uh, another opening uh, problem for me, but, you know, three for three. Somehow. And if I win this, I could break 2400, which would be, you know, nice. It's always nice to break, you know, big whole numbers. Okay. Let's go for a night orc. I always get myself in trouble with night orcs, but they're, they're so enjoyable. Alright. I like this knight bd7, queen a5 oddity. It's a sideline, not many people know it. I think it has some venom, and it has this real logical sense of just getting the queen out of the way of these pins. I also hit the bishop if they go to e2. e2 is a very modern idea. I think it sprung up in the late 2000s. They defend the bishop, and now I want to stop their central advance. And notice this isn't pinned, so my knight keeps control of d5. Right. c7 is a good home for the queen. Queen c7 is actually like the main line. My queen a5 oddity is designed to induce knight b3. Okay. I can throw in h6 with the point that I then threaten to take here. And I've done well there, but I like getting in b5 first. Think about b4, when their knight doesn't have a very good square. Okay, now do I want h6? I think I might, because if they trade, trade, I suddenly threaten bishop g4. But if they take anyway, if they don't take, their pawn's never moving. And if they take anyway... 
then I'm going to get that thread on G4 regardless. So I could think about B4. Hit the knight. If it goes to A4, Queen C6, like, might just trap it. Um, if it goes to D5, I'm going to trade there, and then I'll play F6, securing E5 and drive away the bishop to stop E file pressure. Yeah, I like the look of B4. I don't know where their knight goes. Maybe it has to go to B1. They'll probably play knight D5. Uh, but I think I'm better here. I'm going to take that. If rook takes, bishop b7. If pawn takes, I feel like f6 does a nice job of securing the center. Maybe I should play bishop e7, because with their e-file pressure, their queen is pretty good. They have knight d4 and can reroute their knight into the game to one of these weak squares. I don't want to allow that, so I think I'm going to start with bishop e7, just breaking the e-file pin. Probably a5 now. If they bring another piece to the e-file, I get worried about knight d4 again, and I'll have to figure out something to do about that. But I don't think I have to worry at this moment. Maybe I'll move the knight away? Yeah, I should probably move the knight. Because if I castle, this is still pinned to the bishop. So I would like to defend the bishop. Knight c5 or b6? The brain's telling me b6. So if they take, though, maybe there are problems. Interesting. Knight c5. How am I taking back on e5? Probably f, and then sticking my king in the middle. In that case, I probably want to try to trade off this knight first, because it could be a good attacker against my central king. Not sure about knight c5 versus knight b6. Um, maybe I went to stray with a5. I'm not sure. Take queen. Don't want to be hit by d6 at a bad moment. I have some pressure on g4. So they want to come to g5. If I take g4, they pick up my bishop. Probably have to play h6. Would love to get my bishop out. So I can play bishop g4 now. Don't see the problem with this. I can take back, keep control of g5. And their rook is trapped. And I'm now ready to play rook c8 or rook f8 and be able to recapture rook. Ooh, did not consider this. Okay, I have to take. d6 is the idea. I think I have to go to d7. They take on a8. I take on d1. And I'm just up material? If they retreat the bishop, I was thinking of just playing queen c2 to simplify. Um, I guess I need to cover the checks. I'm up a rook. I threaten that queen g1. I should have played queen g1. That was just mate. Ooh. <laughs> Just missing mates on the board. Luckily, uh, queen e3 is still just a win. But, man, this is not the first time I've missed, like, a mate in two or mate in one in the night. Or, uh, but we did get there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as always, these night orf games fascinate me. Um, yeah, I thought this position was pretty good for me. It's about equal. B5 and H6 were the moves I was considering. G4, and I thought B4 would punish. And I was right. Nice. Though, it's not sure how much of a punish it is. So I said, knight A4, queen C6, trap the knight, and it does. Cool. So knight D5, knight takes, E takes, F6, bishop H4, and now I had to find a move. Yeah, and I thought this knight D4 was a serious problem. So I played bishop E7, which is best. Okay, I get to be pleased with this game, I think. They played bishop g2. I do want to take back knight, because taking back pawn, my king's stuck in the center. Taking back this pawn, d6, can be annoying. So I want to take back knight if they take, which was my idea. They played bishop g2. I went a5. Hey, I played some good moves. Rook g1. Okay, now the computer's starting to see that I might have a problem. Um, and okay, now is when I went wrong. So it wants a4. I didn't actually consider bishop a6. That's, you know, very reasonable. But I dismissed castling. So castles, knight d4. And I thought, I don't want to take because of queen e7. And the computer says, take and allow queen e7. And don't be so scared. Why shouldn't I be scared? This looks kind of scary. Um, b3. Ooh. 
The claim is, my attack is just really good. Huh. It does look pretty good. So the computer's not... So say bishop takes, rook takes. Yeah, just swung over to this. If king b1, queen a5, or a7, and I crash through on the a file. So king d2. I like bishop a6 a lot. Cut off the, uh, the escape. Yeah, that's a nice move. Okay. So actually, b3... I guess with the queen so far away from the defense, moves like this are just really strong. Okay, so I was right to be worried about this, but I didn't realize I could just give up e7. So I played knight c5, and this is a horrible blunder, apparently. Though not as horrible as the computer first thought. Takes, 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 takes. Queen d2, h6. Rook takes e5 is best? Huh. Alright, let's see this. Rook takes e5, f takes e5, d6 check, king d8, yeah? Ah, the a8's just loose now. Bishop takes g4, yeah, yeah, this looks good for white. I am up a pawn, but after rook f1, this looks very dangerous. Okay, so they had rook takes e5, so I'm supposed to play rook a7, get the rook off of it, or king e8. Or king d7. Okay, so let's say rook a7. Then. Get the rook off the off the long diagonal. Queen g5 check. Don't want to go this. Uh, king e8. Rook f1. And I'm just okay. I just have everyone we're covered. Huh? <laughs> That's scary though. And maybe I have b3 coming someday, or a4 and b3. Because it's giving bishop a6, but if you look at the line, it's quickly giving rook e7, stay solid, and then like a4, b3, or a4, a3. Okay, well, tricky position to have to play in blitz. I'm really pleased I played so well to this point, and then I didn't see castles, but I don't feel too bad about that. I think that's a difficult move to play for a4 and then castles. And I'm glad I knew, I saw that this uh, knight d4 idea was potentially threatening, um, but then dealt with it wrongly. All right, uh, got a nice position out of the opening, feel good with how I handled it, didn't find a difficult move to find, but eventually, per usual, got lucky. All right, can we get a fifth win? I think I've played four. Okay, and we broke 2400, so now we'll have to blow it. Take the white side. I need to prepare something sneaky for these e6 Sicilians. Maybe I should go into a Meroxy here. Um, so there's this line with knight b5 and bishop e3 where I can win their queen, and I think I played that on stream and didn't do well. Let's try it again. Knight b5. Queen b8. Bishop b3. a6. Bishop b6. Takes, takes. c3. Bishop a5. Knight c7. I get the queen. Play queen g4, I hit g7, and then what? I think I play f4. I wish I remembered what I had looked at last time. <laughs> uh, I guess I have to go to f3. g3 or f5? Kind of like f5. Threaten fg6, hitting the knight. No fear. Alright, let's play bishop c4. Pin the f-pawn, so I still threaten fg6. So if fg6 now, fg6, knight c4, queen f6, fg6, they hit my queen, and I don't love my retreats. Hmm. Okay, I'll come back to d3. If takes, I take back queen. Yeah, d5 looks reasonable. So if takes, then they have e4. I guess I should castle? I'm going to lose a pawn on f5 probably at the end. Ooh. Yeah, man. Probably shouldn't go into this unprepared. I don't see a way to keep material, though. So. Maybe I'll uh, give up the exchange on f5 and try to get a perpetual. <laughs> Got a take? Yeah. 
f6, I'm going to try rook f1 to f3 probably. Ooh, didn't see that. Nice move. Good rook lift. All right, so probably rook f1. Yeah, nice defense. Can I do anything about their loose kind of bishop and knight? Their bishop's going to come to b6, where it will actually be quite stable. Huh. Huh. Maybe you try h4, h5, see what the rook wants to do. But I think my position is very bad. They're threatening at knight e3. Maybe rook f3. Maybe that's just asking for more pain. Queen e4, then there's knight d2. Queen d7, bishop b6 check. Knight d3 still comes. Right, I'm going to play rook f3, but much like the rest of this game, I do not feel good about it. I don't care so much about b2. Um, you see, it's annoying they have this bishop b6 check in reserve because I can never really chase them. I come to h1. Just if their bishop comes back, they won't have these discoveries and their knight doesn't have checks. Right, let's hit their rook. They might go to g4. Oh, I'm hanging the queen. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, got pretty soundly demolished there. Probably shouldn't keep playing this uh, this queen trade line if I don't know anything about it, or queen win line. Especially because it seems like black players are all familiar with it. g6. Bishop b5. Am I just trying to trade for the uh, knight? Alright, so f4 is already bad. Um, queen h4 is an idea. Okay, bishop b5. Teach me. Knight g7. Castles. Well, indeed, this looks a lot better than what I got in the game. Castles. Hmm. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do next. At least I got my pieces out without, like, hanging everything as I did with f4. Okay, next time I face the Tamanov, I will not go for this. I do not think it is for me. Is that four or five games? Let's see, because I try to play five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Four for five. Not bad. <laughs>